Hello, everybody. What's up? It's Wednesday. I thought it was Tuesday today for some reason, but uh, I do love Wednesdays. Hello, everybody. We finally get to introduce a new case, one we've been talking about behind the scenes for a long time. Today, we're highlighting Aubrey Stowers. <clears throat> How many of you guys know about this case? Probably not many. All right, do me a favor, y'all. For those of you that have not been here before, hit the like button and subscribe. If you're already here and you hit the like button, don't worry about it again or you'll unlike it, which I don't want you to do. Hello, everybody. What's up? I just saw somebody saying they got their first live. I love this community. I've watched all your videos, just never caught an actual live. Hope all is well on this fine Wednesday. Absolutely. And I love having days like this on a hump day because because two reasons. Tomorrow is Thursday, which is closer to Friday. <laughs> and it's a chill day on Wednesdays, whether we're covering Madeline Soto or Aubrey Stowers. So if everybody's ready today, this is, this is a good day to do a new case. You guys, this little girl beautiful little girl Aubrey Stowers five years old was tragically taken from us way too soon beat to death and lots more so we're gonna do what's up Foxy Amazon all the crew all the mods best mods in here Teresa says hi newbies what's up Brittany Rich how you doing hey, everybody Holly S is here and we have a new member today. Rachel, I've seen you around, but Rachel Townsend became a new member. So what's up? Also, happy mid-October, right? Hey, Sadie's mama, good to see you. Sorry I didn't text you back earlier, but uh, I'm here. Yes, rest in peace, Aubrey. Let me put some pictures up there while I talk to you because I want you to see who we're talking about as I do this. All right? And then I'll uh, thank JoJo for the guilty of crime membership hopefully someone gets a membership today that really wants one and susan susan stills is a new member i don't think this is the right one one sec this one i had all right there it is susan hello new member all the new members good to see you jamie just won welcome jamie to the membership we're gonna have a Members only real soon here. Next, Jay, please do the Audrey Cunningham case also. I certainly will. It's on my radar. So let's take a look at who Aubrey Stowers is. Let me show you these pictures, and uh, then I'll talk a little bit. We'll play a video, bring some light. Now, let me tell you, there's not much coverage on this case. So here you go. These are the people that took her life, and I'm so glad that they got um, arrested. It took a while for them to get arrested, but they did. Foxy Amazon, I always wait for you at 420. So thank you. I appreciate that. Membership today as usual. You guys, make sure that you have that. Make sure that you're interacting and you have your membership uh, turned on. All right. So the option to be gifted. All right. All right, those are the people, and you're going to see lots of pictures of these people and 
Aubrey. So let me tell you real quick. Aubrey was five years old. And her parents, they beat her to death. She had blunt force trauma. Now, the exact natures aren't known. Exact nature's not known yet because I don't have a... I don't have an autopsy report with toxicology, but we do know there were drugs in the house. And you can see the pictures as they progress, as we go through this, of her mom looking like she's normal and healthy and like Aubrey looking like she's normal and healthy. And then she gets together with Christopher Clay Stillner. Rachel Waddell is a 36-year-old lady that is Aubrey's mom. Clay is her, well, a step-parent, I would say. We don't know that much yet, but she was found unresponsive at her home on Oak Street on June 17th, 2023. Trial should have been in August, but it got postponed. Now it's going to be starting November 21st, pre-trial. The exact circumstances are not exactly clear, but they do know that it's blunt force trauma. They're, they found drugs in the house, fentanyl, and I think methamphetamines. I'll get into that a little more in a bit. My dog's barking. All right. Injuries aren't detailed yet, but we know it's caused by impact with a dull object or surface. Now, this could be bruises, contusion, contusions, lacerations, or internal injuries re resulting from physical force, meaning she was beat to death. Pre-trial conference is November 21st, 2024. Now, the investigation took quite a while, everybody. Yeah, the puppy does call, but he's just... Uh, he's just uh, talking. He's saying hello to you all. He's good. Why do people continue using drugs? They're so destructive. I don't know. But look at this picture here with her, with Aubrey and Michael Myers, which is her, is actually, he actually is a monster. He actually did. He is one of the people that took her life away. Look at that there. Beautiful little, little thing, little five-year-old that looks like she's she looks younger than five in some of these pictures because she's really, really skinny. And as the time progresses, she gets skinnier. And we're going to see pictures. We're going to go on to this lady's website or her Facebook. And we're going to see this little beautiful angel here. We're going to see that her, she, as she progresses on these pictures, she gets skinnier. And they're bruises. Now, that's a lady that took her life. All right. I don't know why people want to have children. It looks like a totally different person, this lady. And I keep forgetting her name because I really don't want to highlight her name, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then I'm going to show you an article. But her mother is, um, we're going to remember Rachel Waddell. We're going to go on to her Facebook. We're going to also go on to the Justice for Aubrey page. So you guys can go, go sign up for that. It's a private group, but I want you to be on the private group like I am and some of the mods because I want you to follow the case here and I want you to help get justice. Also, court documents are on that page. We have case numbers. So if you all want to dig into this case and get justice for Aubrey, you can also do that. That's a good thing about that. So you can see my picture there. I put a collage together for Aubrey. I blurred, I blurred out the children, the other children, the three other children in the home. Now, this lady is like, almost transformed from here to here to here. And then when you see her in her mug shot, she's even skinnier and gross looking than that. All right. So trigger warning for this, this little girl was beat to death and uh, there's no other real way to say it. All right. So she's right with the evil potato crew and uh, this little girl, Aubrey needs justice. Campbell elementary, cute little thing they obviously like dressing her up making her look cute but as time progressed with this monster and these monsters this is what happened here is this i don't know if i'm covering the picture or not but i'm i think i have a good picture i never understand how someone could hurt a defenseless child and neither can i neither can i because i don't have that in me to even want to spank or hurt a child at all so i don't i really don't know by both asb stay here we're 10 minutes in. Stay here. Listen to this. It's a it's a gonna be a good episode today. We're gonna hear the whole thing. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna only do part of it. You're gonna get the whole story here today. All right. So stay tuned. Thank you for being here. 111. Say a prayer for Aubrey that we get complete and utter justice for her and other people that are like her. And do help support the channel. We are fan funded. So 
everything helps likes and subscribes and shares all right gina parsons says love your content glad to catch a live why are so many children being hurt i just can't comprehend it and neither can i neither can i that's why we're here that's why i started doing this eight nine months ago eight months ago all right so let's go let me talk a little more and then we'll get into the we'll get into the different groups and the different things and then we'll watch a video on this which I'm, i was very excited for petty mason to find that for us okay so let me tell you about the incident a bit because it did take a while it was a lengthy investigation that was presented to green up county which is in kentucky a grand jury they found probable cause to issue murder charges against both waddell and stiltner so both of them both of those people caused Aubrey's death. The couple appeared for arraignment before the Greenup County Circuit and the, the judges, Brian McLeod, they weren't represented by, a, or they were represented by a defense attorney, Sebastian Joy, who entered a not guilty plea deal. All right. Now, as I tell this story, it gets a little bit more twisted, a lot more twisted when we start talking about the drugs in the house, the other children in the house, and the fact that when we look at this lady's Facebook page, the day that they were presented with murder charges, everybody, the day on this lady's Facebook, she has the nerve. This lady has the nerve, Aubrey's mother, to say, I miss my baby. I miss my child. It's not the same without her. Absolutely disgusting. And the nerve of her to do that. I'm going to show you how the dates coincide. Hi, Rosie. How you do? I'm going to show you how they coincide with each other. And it's disgusting. And I can't show you a lot of the Facebook because she has other kids on there that are not blurred out. But I did blur out faces and I do have a bunch of family photos. And Rosie, I've been following the Menendez brothers too. I know it's on today. I'll I'll catch you all up on that tomorrow. Adam drives Helen. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I don't children are targeted, but the world is becoming more evil. Let's be real here, everybody. Let's be real that the world is just it's just absolutely disgusting. All right. ASB, you say, I think she photoshopped her pictures. She probably did. However, you can see the difference between her skinny self, her healthy self, and then when she was all drugged out. All right. It's a rabbit hole. The man didn't post crap about her and the crazy thing. Well, we're going to we're going to find out today. Thanks, Melissa, for being here. Aubrey Stower's life was taken. She was five years old, and these two monsters on your screen beat her to death. That's what happened. And stay here, and I'll show you a lot more. We're going to play a video after we do this, after we get through this stuff, all right? So these people pled not guilty, even though they did it, uh, allegedly did it. They were presented with, uh, they uh, the judge asked for a $500,000 Actually, the attorneys asked for five hundred thousand. Judge set the bond at two hundred thousand cash or property for each defendant. As January twenty fourth came along, the beginning of this year, neither Waddell or Stiltner could afford the two hundred thousand dollar bond. The attorney filed a motion for bond hearing, requesting to lower it. Both would agree to home incarceration. I'm mad about this. Waddell would refrain from contacting her other minor children. All right, so now. After this, the bond hearing was set for March 20th. It was supposed to be a trial in 2024. As of April, the murder trial was set for August 19th. Never happened. Moved to November 21st. Pre-trial. Let's see if that happens. We're going to follow it. Key points are the relationship. The nature of the relationship between Waddell and Stilner. How it affected Aubrey's well-being. Aubrey was very healthy until he came along this guy the stepdad or whatever you want to call it the boyfriend while the defense claims neither suspect have a criminal history the prosecution argued that stiltner was charged with felony related to child abuse but pleaded a misdemeanor and got a plea deal other children in the house suggest their siblings and minors we'll see that the timeline was june 17 2023 aubrey was found unresponsive in the home after they called 911. All right, the circumstances we now know her cause of death was blunt force trauma. We don't know exactly to which parts of her because we don't have the uh, autopsy or the toxicology just yet. So that being said, I wanted to make sure I let you know about the father, the biological dad, Dean Stowers, was trying to get custody of Aubrey and 
filed bankruptcy, wasn't able to do that, has some traffic violations, nothing to speak about. But Clay, the stepdad, has a history of child abuse. Um, where is the I know there was something about the drug charges, and I'll get into that in a sec. All right, let's keep going. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. What's going on? Let me show you some pictures and then we'll get into Facebooks and then we'll play our video. All right, I pull this down. This is this beautiful little little girl that you can see over time, just kind of, uh, I would say, emaciated. Here I see food on her face, but later we're going to see bruises. All right. Let's uh, stop sharing that, and I'm going to get into these pictures here, the ones I can use anyway. All right, and I'll show you. I will go through a slideshow real quick, and you'll see how it progresses. There's a lot of, lot of crime going on right now, folks. All right, so you can see this little girl, and it's not in any order. I just want to show you the picture, scroll through them, CPS reports. Uh, JoJo, we're going to dig deep into this. Yeah, it is heartbreaking, and we barely just started. We barely started this, everybody. We haven't even got to everything. You haven't seen anything yet. All right, so let me scroll through the pictures, and then I will go through Facebook for you. All right, so this lady doesn't look like she does in her mugshot. I, look at how many children there are. This was before. This is before Clay. Three Four children, three other siblings. This, this is Aubrey right here. That is Aubrey, that cute little girl down there with the chubby cheeks. That's what children should look like. That's Aubrey. And you're going to see as we go how she starts to get thinner and different and lots of bruises as Clay comes into their life. Look at her. You can see her. She has lots of bruises on her, folks. As she gets older and thinner, you can see you can see the bruises. You can see, I don't know, I, I see a little sadness, and, and we'll see more and more as we go. You can see the bruises there on her. You can see some, like, somebody grabbed her arms more than what a five-year-old would have from playing. Now, she probably bruised very easily, but rest in peace, Aubrey, all right? Now, as we start to progress with this guy, the devil, the other devil, this lady gets skinnier, she gets skinnier, and we start to see bruising. All right. Well, there's some drug of choices that are fentanyl and methamphetamines, which I'm going to get into, but that is rumor. Yeah. CPS, unfortunately, not the saviors of everyone. Many times they're not at all, Foxy Amazon. This is, uh, there are a lot of cases similar to Harmony Montgomery, but this is, I wouldn't say it's similar other than, yeah, her being her beat to death. What's up? Four victims first. Hi from Pennsylvania. Poor baby angel. Absolutely right. Thank you for being here. She's so tiny. The poor little angel. Yeah, let's keep going. All right. Thank you all for being here. If you're new, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bells. All right. So there you go. As it progresses, as the as this relationship progresses, she gets older and thinner. There's the monster himself. That's pre-Clay, where they are all still healthy looking. There's the photo I used on the front cover. Such a cute little thing. Every time you see her, she's hammed up with her little glasses. And five years old, five years old when she died, there's stepdad or boyfriend. They didn't make it quite clear, but we'll get in there. Cute. She's still not five yet. She looks like about three. Oh, I didn't mean, I didn't want to show that, but there's that one again. And let's get this off. All right, let's get into the Facebook group, everybody. Let's get into the Facebook group and then we'll move. I want you all to join the Facebook groups as well because I want you. Well, actually, let me do the article and then I'll go into that. I want you to go into Justice for Aubrey because you guys, it's a boyfriend. Yes, boyfriend. I want you to go to justice for Aubrey because you can um, help. You can help with the case. You can dig deeper. You can find out a lot of things. You can keep up with the trial there. And then you all can send me. You can literally send me uh, things as they progress as well. All right. So let's get into this. Kentucky mother boyfriend accused of causing fatal blunt force injuries to a five-year-old girl. All right. There are those people's mug shots. 
And while I'm reading, I can't pay attention to chat, but I'm doing my best, all right? So, again, thank you for being here. Wortland, Kentucky, a couple in custody nearly nearly half a year after, so six months after Aubrey, five-year-old child, was found dead in their home. June 17th, the Kentucky State Police responded to a call regarding the suspicious death of a five-year-old child identified as Aubrey Stowers. 501 Oak Street, during the investigation, detectives obtained evidence that alleged connection allegedly connected Rachel Waddell and her boyfriend, there it is, Christopher Stiltner, to the child's death. Investigators presented the case to a grand jury, which returned the indictment on January 11th. Remember that January 11th date, because I'm going to show you that Facebook post. And on January 11th, this lady has the nerve to post about missing her daughter when she's the one that allegedly caused her death, okay? We gobshite. Welcome, new members, and welcome to you. Thank you, Foxy Amazon, for the one Guilty of Crime membership. I appreciate everything you all do. Hello, Stella. Good to see you. All right, let's keep going. So the detectives apprehended the couple at their home, and they were booked in Greenup County Detention Center. Um, there, the pair engaged in conduct which created grave risk of death to another person, thereby caused the death of a five-year-old child due to multiple blunt force injuries. They said they were waiting for additional tests to come back regarding her death. Again, they don't have the toxicology or any of that. According to her obituary, which I have, Stowers was a happy little five-year-old girl who loved her siblings, loved riding her bike, enjoyed listening to music and cuddling and sleeping with her bulldog, Diesel. All right. So let me show you this. Let me see. I got to bring this and then I'll show you the her obituary. It's just really, it makes it real when you see that. When you see her, a five-year-old's obituary it just doesn't make sense when it's that. I don't understand why a certain child of a bunch or how they pick that child, especially if they all have the same father. It's not. It's a it's a boyfriend and she's younger. So I think because she was so young and vulnerable, they were able to, you know, target her easily more easily. She gets thinner in these pictures, and there's her obituary. All right, April 18th, 2018 to June 17th, 2023. And, uh, you know, they don't say much about how she passed or anything. You just see her where you could visit her, Cana Funeral Home in Kentucky. And uh, it's very sad. It's very sad talking about the sassy five-year-old loving her bulldog. They don't say anything about the parents. They do talk about... She's preceded in death by her paternal grandparents, Mike Stowers and Gail. And then they go on to, they even have her mother in here and her father, Michael Stowers. Luckily, they don't talk about the boyfriend. All right, let's take that off. And <clears throat> let's see. I know there's a part that specifically talks about the drug charges, but I don't see that right now. So let's get to the Facebook. All right. And you guys, like I said, could go on there. Not Maybe not this one particularly, but I want you to see this post from Rachel. This is her post. Look at this January 11th post that she did. All right. There's an Aubrey Stowers. It's not in my Facebook group. I'm going to show you in a minute. All right. I'll show you in a minute. This is Rachel's post. On the same day she was indicted with murder, she posts... Right here, January 11th, I miss you every day, Aubrey Marie. You are my in my thoughts every second of every day. I'm so blessed to have two amazing girls and a son that love you and are resilient. Well, lady, Aubrey's not so resilient because she's not here. Life is not the same without you because allegedly you took our life, but our love is strong. All right, and then she writes a thing about her heartbreak, welcome grief, et cetera, et cetera, which I don't believe one word of anything let's see if you guys you can see that yeah crazy woman right this lady is crazy she's out of her mind sharon sharon belko you got in here hey how's it going good to see you i got your emails but i had trouble responding because it was from a text message good to see you all right so her mother is yeah a bit wacky when more than that i'm very 
mad that she would have the nerve to post something like that. I'm not even going to read that because it means nothing to me. So there is she. That is the lady that you saw before. That is the lady that allegedly took Aubrey's life with her boyfriend. All right. And thank you so much, Overprotected 1111. Thank you. We love you. And I love you all. Thank you for being here and supporting the channel. And thank you for being here for brand new cases because we need to shed light on other children. It's a, it's a must, everybody. It really is. And the big picture of her, right. Yeah, Barb, how can she post something like that? And then, it, yeah, she posts a big picture of her. So she's got this. and She talks about her heartbreak from a, from a alleged crime that she did. I learned from the future is an illusion of the past in prison. And I'm learning to let go. And people will betray you and justify it. But you betrayed your daughter. And then you put a picture of yourself here with cleavage. What is that? Look at that. That doesn't even look like her. And there are bruises in those photos. You can see the bruises on her there. And we'll get to that in the video. And she posts this monster on that same post. It's unbelievable. All right. So I'm going to get, I don't want to show her other children. I flashed by real quickly, but I don't want to. I don't want to put them in danger. She definitely has cleavage MS, but that's not the thing. She's showing it off, and it's like, what are you doing? All right, there it is. Justice for Aubrey Marie Stowers. There's 1.7 thousand members. It's a private group. You guys could go join it. Or just type that in, and you should join it because Madeline Soto, Maddie Soto had, you know, thousands of members when I started. And now there's 11,000. Okay. There is a, over 11,000 in Madeline Soto's group. Maddie, 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 Maddie. We love Maddie, but we we also love Aubrey and we want justice for Stowers, all right? Yeah. Let me scroll down this real quick. This will tell you a little bit more. But while I'm doing this, hopefully you guys can remember Justice for Aubrey Marie Stowers or Justice for Aubrey. All right, private group. I'm in. I'm showing you this. We got a lot of admins. They keep it civil here. Did she? I was joined into the group. Let me. I was joined into the group. Let me see if uh, maybe they have it. Maybe I joined it in this one. One second. One second. Justice. There it is. All right. I'm in it. It's just a different. There it is. All right. All right. I'm in it, y'all. Let me reshare that. Oh, you got it. Oh, wow. That's cool. Hey, look at that. I didn't even put that in there. I haven't even been in this group. So I'm in this group and I just scrolled down and Holly Rooster Zietz put my video on there that we're playing right now. So. I'm watching my video. When does the case go to trial? November 21st. It's a pre-trial hearing. CC, that's when it goes to trial. Now, don't forget to hit that like button. So this is really nice that they put my video in their private uh, Aubrey, Justice for Aubrey Stowers, Marie Stowers. Yes, let's follow this case like we do with Maddie. All right. Aubrey, Ashley, how you doing? Didn't get a reminder. It, just no so Cal Brad. I'm on every day at 4 p.m. pretty much. Lynette, thanks for all you do, Jay. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks for all you do. All right, so I just got into this, and they posted that. That was very nice of them. And um, we got the pictures here. They're doing their best to keep Aubrey's name out there and make sure they get justice. Now, here's this real quick. I'll read no firm trial date. All right. But Rachel Waddell, 37, and her boyfriend, Clay, or Chris Stiltner, were arrested in January on a sole count of murder after investigators launched an investigation into a suspicious death. Previous reports indicate Aubrey was found unresponsive in the home June 2023. The pair was additionally indicted on charges of possessing fentanyl and anabolic steroids. That makes sense, y'all. The steroids is what makes a guy like Clay roid rage and be angry and then this other lady there's probably more than just fentanyl because she lost a lot of weight very quickly 
Now, previously, the case was set for a jury trial in August, but the defense, uh, Sebastian, uh, Sebastian Joy, requested more time. So now it's going to be November 21st, okay? So go back to this page. You'll get all kinds of information, people following up about the court cases, what's happening, when's the next court. You can see uh, the court case number here, Commonwealth versus Rebecca. So you can look up yourself. There's even first degree sexual abuse in here, y'all, for a Sean Clark. I don't, I'm not sure what that is, but if you want to deep dive a case, you can come to this, not only come to this channel and deep dive with us, but go to that justice for Aubrey Marie Stowers. Please do that. It's in my group now and uh, we can do that together. All right. It's so damn sad because she seemed somewhat normal before him. Right. Right. Hello, Synth. How you doing? I'm so glad to have this crime crew. I'm glad to have my mods. I'm glad to have all of you that are just amazing, amazing human beings. So thank you guys. All right. So there's lots of information on here. If you want to dig deeper, please do. I'm going to get into the video now. I want to make sure I have enough time to play the video for you and answer questions, talk to you. There's a lot going on in this case, and I have a lot to share. I mean, this is just really a good deep dive case as well. I have Clay's Facebook, so we can look into that. Now, of course, even if someone's on a substance, their responsibilities for action taken, roid rage doesn't excuse the abuse, but it helps you to understand what was going on when people ask why she was targeted. It makes sense that someone was on roids, she was little, and she, the third child in, not his child. It makes more sense, Starzy. And you, if you know me, you know me, Jay, from Guilty of Crime. You know that I don't excuse that by anything. Yes, rest in peace, Aubrey, Karen says. I don't excuse, I don't excuse you being a dumb potato. I don't excuse you being um, anything. Scary Sherry. What state? It's in Wortland, Kentucky. All right. This is a new case. Yes. There's so many of these too, everybody. So many. What's up, Crystal Burns? How you doing? All right. So Wortland, Kentucky is where it happened. And um, yeah, there's a lot here. I've got Clay's. Uh, I've got all kinds of backstory to this. I got Clay's Facebook in here. I've got... Uh, the cause of death article. We went over some of those things, the charges, trial dates, pre-conference trials. Um, yeah, there's so much. So let's get into this now. Wortland, Kentucky. This is where we're going to start. Okay. Let's get into it. And you guys can shout out. Wortland, Kentucky is a small town bordering Ohio situated on the southern banks of the Ohio River. Yeah, this is going to be a perfect video for you all that came here to find out about this case, see what's happening, and know what's going on. Kayla Scott says, I live here. This case is crazy. Thank you for being here. Nikki Sh Cherie, my daughter is five, and I couldn't imagine me either. It's where Rachel Waddell, a single mom, and her four children lived a seemingly normal life in this modest home. Rachel had graduated from nursing school in 2012 and was currently employed as a nurse at St. Mary's ER across the river in Ironton, Ohio. Rachel was previously married to Michael Dean Stowers, who was the father of all four of her children. It's unclear when they parted ways. I'm wondering if their split was amicable or tumultuous. It would be interesting to know Rachel's mindset after the split. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything on the details of their split. It's also unclear what the custody arrangement was for the children, but it looks to me after searching through Rachel's social media that she was the primary caregiver. As I was scrolling through Rachel's Facebook, which we all know is technically fake book, everyone portrays who they want the world to see. Right, and that's where we just went into right now. So if you just got here, everybody, we're talking about, and we want justice for Aubrey Stowers, five years old, was beat to death by her mother that you see on the screen and her mother's boyfriend. So Clay, and I keep I keep forgetting her mom's name just because I really don't care, but it's Rachel Waddell and Clay Stiltner. Rachel and Clay took her life by blunt force trauma. 
All right. Now we just started this video, Heathen 74. So you can actually just watch the video and it will explain. And most times it's not who they truly are. But with that said, Rachel seemed to be a normal, loving mother to her children prior to meeting Clay. In her earlier posts, her children look well-dressed, clean, and seemed happy. I found this comment under one of Rachel's Facebook posts from what appears to be Rachel's sister or someone close to her, talking about the date Rachel's youngest daughter, Aubrey, was born. This comment makes it seem that Aubrey was a blessing to the family. So how on earth did Rachel end up burying her five-year-old daughter and standing before a judge charged with murder. While researching her Facebook page, I noticed changes in Rachel's posts. I noticed changes in Aubrey, horrific changes. Something obviously went terribly wrong. Aubrey Marie Stowers was a beautiful blue-eyed angel born April 18th all right, so we're going to call her Stowers, and we hope that it's Stowers, because as this case progresses, there's not much on the news, there's not much anywhere, but we hope to put this out there so so that Aubrey Stowers, Aubrey Marie Stowers, can you guys can know her name as well as you know the other children that endured abuse and their life was taken. Yeah, probably meth. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to play this and grab my dog. 2018 in Portsmouth, Ohio. Her eyes were bursting with life, and her smile warmed anyone's heart that was lucky enough to receive it. She loved riding her bike. She loved dancing to music. She never met a stranger. She would walk right up to you and start a conversation. And before leaving, she would tell you she loved you. Aubrey looked up to her brother and sisters, and they loved their little sister immensely. Her best friend, though, was her bulldog, Diesel. She loved to cuddle with him. She found comfort in him. I'm so glad Aubrey had Diesel. I hope for even brief moments, she felt safe when he was near. I wonder if he knew. I wonder what he saw. It breaks my heart to think about where he is now without Aubrey. She was looking forward to starting kindergarten. In and we're gonna see as these, as this progresses, we're gonna see bruises in pictures. We just saw this little girl's obituary, and in her obituary, she loved her dog, Diesel. I don't know what happened to the dog. I don't know what happened to the children, but we can find out. Wes is angsty today. He wants to say hi, but he also doesn't want me to hold him. So, hello, everybody. Welcome. Hit the like button if you like Wes. How about that? All right. Yeah, these people are absolute monsters. All right, I had to do that. In the fall but that would never happen. Her little life and little dreams were violently ripped away June 17th, 2023. Rachel's first Facebook post with her partner Clay Stiltner was December 24th, 2021. So I'm assuming they started dating in 2021. It's unclear since neither of them have relationship statuses in their profiles. Side note, the news articles state his name is Christopher, but according to Facebook, he goes by Clay. I did some digging on Clay and found that he has a daughter that seems to be about the same age as Rachel's oldest. It doesn't look like he had full custody of her, but his Facebook page has him and his daughter as the profile picture and the cover photo. Most of his posts are crass at best. He posts a lot of memes and jokes that, yeah, maybe some are funny, but there are a few that are just gross and possibly offensive to women, which says a lot to me about the kind of guy he probably is. What's interesting is he has no pictures of him and Rachel anywhere on his Facebook. I scanned. I do have his Facebook too, and I can pull that up after this. I've got more information to tell you. I gave you a good amount in the beginning. This is going to give you a good amount, and then you know we're not going to let this go. We're going to hope that trial comes November 21st and that we can cover it, at least do recaps of it. And hopefully it doesn't end up like another case that I'm going to cover maybe this week, maybe next, where the mom walked away because the jury was hung and couldn't decide. We don't want that. Through every post. And God help me, I needed a drink after that. And I didn't find any likes from Rachel or comments, which I find interesting. 
On Rachel's Facebook page, she has quite a few photos of her and Clay. I noticed Clay never liked or commented on any of those posts. Being a woman myself, who has in the past been single and dating, that's a red flag when your partner hasn't shared photos of you or the two of you together on his social media and never likes or comments on any of your posts. It may sound trife, but it shows a lack of interest. I mean, he has plenty of time to post jokes about women's body parts, and it's not like Clay wasn't active on his social media. He was posting once or twice a week. What I glean from comparing their social medias within the context of this case is that Clay seemed nowhere near as much into the relationship as at least Rachel portrayed to be. Clay's last post on Facebook was dated June 15th, 2023, two days before Aubrey's death. After that post, he would not post again until November 6th of 2023. That is very telling to me, especially when comparing the context of his usual post to this one, nearly four months after Aubrey's death. Do you think he posted a tribute to Aubrey, condolences to her family, or mentioned her at all? No, it's about himself, of course. Praying a lot, staying strong. Clearest I've had my head in a while. Clearest I have my head in a while after my girlfriend's daughter's life was taken by both of us. As I was using steroids and fentanyl patches, probably using steroids, working out, being in pain, taking fentanyl patches. Same with the mom. The mom's on there praying for her daughter, and she's the one that was arrested for taking her life. And then she shows a picture of herself thinking she looks cute with her cleavage. Like, what is up with these people? Do we have that many sociopath, narcissistic people? I mean, really? Yeah, it infuriates me too. And hello, M. Good to see you with um, a Guilty of Crime membership. This is why you'd stay single. I'd never risk my two little girls. Exactly. Look at this monster here, smiling. What are you praying for, Clay? Are you praying law enforcement doesn't find out what you did? Clearest you've had your head in a while? What does that mean? Were you on drugs, addicted to alcohol? Staying strong, what does that mean? Because obviously you're a coward who hurts little girls. I digress. His next post is about a week later. Of course, not a mention of Aubrey. It's about himself again. I know they make medicine and God is an amazing source, but my little buddy has been a rock, the size of a glacier for me. It's absolutely incredible what they can do for you. I'd be lost without him. Thank you, Duke, and thank you, God, for helping us. Lost without this dog but nothing no mention of aubrey rest in peace aubrey stowers we hope that justice comes for this guy as he takes a picture of himself trying to pretend like he's sleeping looking like he's has probably been using roids and you know you can see he, he still looks like a big big fat potato but oh these people are disgusting and when you look at a, a facebook like this it tells you a lot about someone even though it's a fake book, it does tell you a lot. Find each other, 13 years strong. This post made me want to come through my phone. This piece of human garbage is talking about his struggles, how he leans on his dog for comfort. What about Aubrey Clay? She leaned on her dog. That's about all she had to. Yes, both of these people were arrested six months after they called 911 and this child was found dead in the home blunt force trauma they had to investigate quite a bit it wasn't just a hey i called in and she's dead we're arresting you they had to look into it they had to look through the house they had to look through pictures when did this happen it happened june 17 2023 trial was supposed to happen in august it got pushed out to pre-trial november 21st both are arrested and in jail or they they're either in jail or on house arrest but i i i think that if they are, all the children are taken away from them. We'll find out more. Yeah, sleeping in on meds. Sharon Belko, yeah, damn it. Where is Diesel? That's what we want to know. Yeah, it took them six months to arrest these people. To lean on. Since the adults in her life, who she should have been able to lean on for comfort and safety, were slowly killing her. Then, as if it can't get any worse, his next four posts are ridiculous memes up until a week before he was arrested. If your intimate partner lost her five-year-old daughter, you would think there would be some sort of mention of condolences. If you are dating a child's mother, posing for photos with that child as if you were a supportive, caring figure in her life, 
you would think there would be some mention of her or her grieving mother in your posts. But no, you post about yourself and then go right back to your crass, unintelligent, caveman style rhetoric. Very telling, Clay. Here's a comment I found under one of Rachel's Facebook posts that seems to back up what I'm thinking about this so-called relationship. I've known Rachel many years, and I can honestly say I never thought she could do this. And I also know Clay and many details and stories about him. And honestly, this didn't surprise me at all. I just wish someone would have gotten her away from him before he turned her into this monster. But now the only thing everyone should be focused on is the truth coming out and justice for this baby. Very telling. Let's dive into Rachel's Facebook. It definitely tells a cryptic story. You have to read between the lines and dig a bit for sure. And we will, and we are, and we're telling the story together. I also would love to interview somebody since they did let the post come in and I have my, my video on there. Hopefully they know that we're here to see justice through. We're here to cover the case, anything that they want, like we did with Maddie, even though when it gets dirty and people all of a sudden want, you know, it's like a money grab for these things. And it's the, it's the most disgusting thing. But thank you, SoCal Brat, for saying that. Yeah, no jerks are tolerated here. And there's no reason to continue talking about any of that because there's nothing for me to talk about. I literally just woke up and that's all I did was just wake up like I do every day. This YouTube man, if, you know, if I hadn't got you all as a crime crew, I wouldn't even come on here. I'd just be like, ugh. I'm just going to go to work. But there are blatant indicators something was terribly wrong with Aubrey. Going back to 2019 photos of Aubrey seem to show a healthy, happy little girl. I don't notice anything out of place in any of these photos. What's interesting is there aren't a lot of public posts or photos prior to Rachel intertwining herself with Clay. I wonder why she's starting to share so much after she started dating him. I can only speculate here but I have a few theories I'd like to lay out for you to ponder. And hopefully, as more information is released in this case, things will become more clear. My first theory is she was in a controlling relationship. Often in those types of unhealthy relationships, the controlling partner demands you splash them all over your social media for the public to see. Even if they don't do the same, in their mind, it's a way of showing the world you are together, sort of marking their territory. Another theory I have is Rachel knew her life was in shambles after Clay's mask came off and she saw who he really was. And by posting photos that clearly show Aubrey and even possibly herself with suspect injuries, that maybe it was a cry for help. There is also. And now we're going to get into the injuries here. So again, trigger warning for everybody. I'll, I'll get the, this is our trigger warning mascot. And, uh, you know, we're always going to remember what this came from, whether we get a new one as time goes, but trigger warning because the bruises on this child, the things that we're talking about, it's very disturbing, but we cannot bring light to a subject if we don't know about it, talk about it and let people know what happened to Aubrey Stowers. All right. So thank you all for being here hit the like button on your way in. If you leave, hit the like button on your way out. Lou says, Petty, I guess having a few autoimmune things going on, major anxiety. Well, hello, Lou. I hope you're feeling better while you're here anyway. All right. Now, maybe this lady was using drugs to make herself skinnier. Maybe this clay guy was telling her you're too fat and being abusive to her and causing her to lose weight. We, we don't know exactly just that, but alleged. So a sadistic element I contemplated. Once you see the photos I'm about to show you, you may agree why it made me ponder if Rachel wasn't getting some sort of sick pleasure posting photos of an injured Aubrey. With such little information available, it's really hard to say what was going on in Rachel's head. I don't wanna believe the wrong relationship could turn a mother into a monster but she was indicted for the same crimes as Clay, which is quite telling and gut-wrenching to think she participated in the torture of beautiful Aubrey for years. In this photo here, I have a red circle around Aubrey's arms and you can see in the crease of her arms, it looks like there is bruising. I don't know if it's from being tied up or what, but it's very obviously there. And you can also see, if you look closely, her wrist. It looks like something had been binding her wrist. There is definitely a mark there that looks bruised. This photo here shows it close up, her wrist, 
you can see in the red circle, there's definitely some bruising and some redness on her wrist. In this photo here, she's got stitches on her eye. Now, mind you, children get injured. Sometimes they need stitches, but as you now, I want you to know children do get stitches and, you know, my daughter, you guys know, we joke about my daughter every day having something going on with her. Um, but this, these are not the kind of injuries. Um, these are not the kind of injuries that happen to a little girl repeatedly over and over these serious injuries. You can see her lip busted, her eyes bruised. She's got stitches there. And this progresses as it goes. So trigger warning again. Yeah, making her pose. She's getting skinnier. This is absolutely just disgusting. Hello, Avis. Good to see you. All of you. Thank you so much. All right. I I'm guess the mom could say she was reaching out for help, but I don't believe it. Yeah, we hope she doesn't walk away like that. I hope she doesn't walk away from this. We'll see going forward. There are just so many photos. It's obvious these weren't just accidents happening every once in a while. And in this picture, which I find very, very difficult to look at because Clay is in it and posing with her. But you can see on, on first of all, I have to say in a lot of photos on Rachel's Facebook, I noticed that Aubrey wears sunglasses often. I am concerned. You know what? I forgot to say because I got so excited with you all coming in here. The mom, Holly S., was a nurse. Isn't that, doesn't that outrage you? I forgot to tell you that her mother, Rachel, was a freaking nurse. Oh, that makes me so mad. So, yeah, you're right. She could have stitched her own daughter up at home and, and let her daughter have all these injuries and been taking care of it at home. She could have been doing that for months because she also had blunt force trauma when she died, which includes internal injuries. So she could have been having injuries for months or even years. Thank you, Pink Rose, for being a member for one month. She sh wouldn't be indicted unless the DA feels they got enough to convict, and they do have enough to convict Starzy. It took them six months. Remember that because we're still waiting for Jennifer Soto to be arrested for Madeline Soto. It took them six full months to get the indictment and bring it before the grand jury or for the grand jury to approve it. Hello, Jensa Gypsy. Good to see you all. I don't understand about that either. I really don't against all logic, but I'm glad we're here together and we're fighting in this crime, same fighting the same battles, this crime all together because there's so many of them. Yeah, she was a freaking nurse. Learned that she was wearing sunglasses to conceal injuries on her eyes. You can see on this close up here, bruising on her inner arm in the same spot we saw when she was in the car seat and another bruise on her outer arm pointed out by the red arrows here. On this photo, you see a lot of bruising on her legs. And again, we all know kids fall, but this is extreme in my opinion. All of the bruising being pointed out by these red arrows, and it's just heartbreaking to see this. In this photo of Aubrey with her best friend Diesel, you might notice a little discoloration of her nose. Here you can see a close up of yep. her nose. It looks like scraping of her nose in her nostril. It looks like dried blood. And then here pointed that yellow area looks like some sort of a bruising. In this photo here pointed out by the white arrows, definitely on her head there where her hairline is, there is an injury surrounded by a lot of bruising. Same with over her eyes. Like I said, trigger warning, everybody. I, you can see her start to get emaciated and thinner as these pictures go. And this mom, this nurse, left them up. She just left these pictures up, posted them like nobody was going to notice. And they probably didn't for a long time. I, it looks like another bruise that lo actually looks swollen to me. And then her nose looks like there is crusted blood around her little nostril. It does. Her lips look very, very dry and chapped. And it does look like there might possibly be some markings around her lips as pointed in this red arrow here. And then I've also gotten more close up on that bruise that is around her hairline. In this photo here, you can see that the stitches were removed and that injury is still healing. And it looks to me
And you know what? If we weren't looking at these pictures closer, we would just think that this was a little girl that was going about her day, eating food in her high chair, you know, having a good time with her mom's boyfriend, uh, having a good time with her mom. Yeah, Scary Sherry, see something and say something. Always see something and say something. Absolutely. It's infuriating. But we wouldn't think that anything was wrong had we not looked deeper. They were posted on social media. Not only were they posted on social media, but they're still there, Joe Nana. They're still freaking there. And thank you, Jojo. I always appreciate you. She sent a $5 super chat. This is for the crew members who want to donate but are unable to. Thank you. I appreciate you all for being here and supporting my channel. And thank you guys for being nice. Thank you. Where are, were the teachers? She was five years old against all logic. Many times school doesn't start until you're five. I just hit 222 in here watching. So do say a prayer for Aubrey that we get complete and utter justice for her. Children don't start school until they're five. And who knows? But nobody was there. And she turned up at her own house, passed away from blood force trauma. So we can't always, you know, put it on the teachers. We don't like know. Her eyes are very tired. She's got bags under her eyes and discoloration. And again, her lips look very dry and chapped, which to me is indicative of maybe some dehydration. Also on her hand pointed out by an arrow, there is a bruise on her hand as well. This photo here, her under eyes again are very discolored. I'm not sure what is going on above her lips there. It may be some punch she drank. It could possibly just be from that. I'm not really sure. Again, if you look down on her arm, it seems to be some bruising around her wrist area like I showed you in another photo. And then I don't know why her finger looks so discolored to me. I'm not sure if there's an injury or something healing. It just, her finger doesn't look right and it looks concerning to me. In this photo here, she has for sure a black eye. There is no doubt in my mind that is not what that is. And Rachel has her posing, smiling in Christmas photos. It is just horrific and unreal to me why she's posting these photos. In this photo here at New Year's, you can see she's got a bruise above her eye. Healing of a black eye, in my opinion. So incredibly sad. In this photo here, it looks like she has two black eyes or they are very, very discolored. On her arm there, the one that's reaching up, it looks like there's more bruising there. And then she's got horrific bruising on her legs, as we saw in the other photo where she was in the bunny ears. In this photo here, you can see a bruise on her arm. I went in for a close up there because I wasn't sure if it was her hair, but it's definitely not her hair. There is a pretty dark bruise there on her arm. This photo here is of Rachel, one of her legs. That could be indicative of some sort of abuse. It could be an accident. I'm not really sure, but that's a lot of bruising on her leg there that I just thought I would point out to you guys. All of the photos I just showed you were publicly posted on Rachel's Facebook. You're probably wondering how did all now see that could have happened. Sorry, I had to take this call for a second. My insurance company's finally maybe moving forward on my roof and my ceiling. Um he could have been abusing her and she could have gotten out. She was a grown ass woman. She obviously didn't tell on him. She didn't say anything as a nurse to anybody because it took six months for them to arrest these two, which means that she had his back that when, when Aubrey died, she didn't say to them, Oh, he had been doing that to her, maybe abusing me. So I'd like to see what uh, excuse she comes up with now after not saying anything then. So let's get I and they might be tried together. I've seen them with the same attorney and it looks like they're being tried together. All right. So dark circles under eyes indicative of living in black mold, which makes sense if you're living in a basement, also anemia. We're going to get into that, too. That I think you're talking about another little girl there that that happened to all of the injuries on little Aubrey go unnoticed. And if anyone did notice all of the injuries, why were they not reported? Because the arrest of Rachel and Clay just happened a few weeks ago, there is very little information. How does, how does she look now, everybody? Hold on. Let me... How does she look now to you all? Does that look like her anymore? I would use the word disgusting, right? If he was abusing her, I'm wondering if the pictures posted with bruises. Well, she had a mouth. She was a nurse. She knew better. I, I'm, a, I'm not going to give a grown woman a pass 
like that information available as to the details of what went on. So my only option for insight is their social media pages. I dug through the comments on every post in Rachel and Clay's Facebook pages, and I found a few nuggets. Comments on a Facebook page obviously need to be taken with a grain of salt. It's hardly verifiable information, but I thought we should take a look at what some people have to say anyway. These comments paint an interesting picture of some possible information that may come out at trial. This is merely a speculation, but very interesting. This comment here was under a birthday post for Rachel's son. It's stated by two different people that her son... All right, real quickly, I want to thank Scary Sherry. Thank you so much for the $25 uh, cash app. I appreciate that greatly. It helps out so much. Um, yeah, if she was a nurse, Amy, no excuse for her not to have left. Let, she knows how to protect women when they go to shelters and get away from their abuser. And she didn't protect her daughter. That's the thing. She didn't protect her daughter. She's a mandated reporter and she's a perpetrator. Yep, that's what makes it even more disgusting and pathetic. I agree. All right, let's listen to this. Did tell what was happening to Aubrey. A lot of comments are from people furious. No one reported what was happening to Aubrey. But there are a few comments like these that are saying people were reporting the abuse, including her own brother. This one here says he reported that mommy and her boyfriend beat his sister, then go shopping. Can you imagine if her brother was telling people about Aubrey and... I know that made you mad. Beat his sister and then go shopping. Now imagine what the kids will have to say about it now. And they will probably have to go to trial and testify because these awful, horrible people are not going to plead guilty. They're not. They're going to fight it all the way through together. Sea Life, thank you so much for the $4.99 super sticker. I'm going to pretend like it, they're avocados. Carrie, yes. Happy full moon, super moon, harvest moon. Closest full moon will get to the earth in 2024. Thank you. That's why I have a moon back there behind me. All right. Yeah, she does look malnourished, dehydrated, and anemic. I left my ex with the children's safety. There's no excuse. Right, Lou. And thank you guys for being here and supporting the channel and Aubrey Stowers and justice that we're seeking for her. No one was listening. I can't imagine the heavy burden her siblings must carry. If they were not being physically hurt, I'm sure they heard or witnessed it happening to their baby sister, Aubrey. It must have been absolutely terrifying. And it makes me shudder to think how helpless they must have felt to try to save her. These comments here are stating that CPS was involved, but Rachel kept flying under the radar because she was a there nurse. Yes, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Rachel was an ER nurse working at St. Mary's ER in Ironton. An ER nurse, everybody. Now, I want you to all to know that she was an ER nurse and CPS did possibly get involved, but nothing happened. Now, victims, four victims first. She was very controlled by a boyfriend, but still, my God, put your babies first. She's And she's going on trial with him. Still not putting Aubrey Stowers first. Putting him first. In Ohio, across the river from where they were living in Wordland. So that means she was a mandated reporter. This comment from a woman states her husband was in the ER where Rachel was working, and she remembers there was a nurse there that had lost her child. Someone else comments that the ER allowed Rachel to still work there, even though she had an open case with CBS. How can a mother who is a nurse, whose life work is to heal and comfort the sick and injured, hurt her own child and allow a subhuman piece of garbage like clay to come in and terrorize their entire household. And here we are again with CPS possibly dropping the ball, this time allegedly giving special treatment in this case because Rachel was a nurse. Now this is all speculation as I mentioned, but I would be willing to bet there is truth to some of this. We'll just have to wait until more details are released. Here is a comment I found stating Clay was a monster. It also states in one of the articles I read that he had a previous conviction for abuse of a minor. Come on, Rachel. Did you not do any due diligence before bringing Clay around your... Like I said I earlier, when you all came in, you asked lots of questions about this, this, and that. And I told you we would definitely cover that. And here we are. So I'm glad you guys are in here learning about Aubrey Stowers. Many of you don't know about her. I've seen very little about her on YouTube or anywhere on the internet except for i 
the social media group that I found and a few videos, etc. Again, thank you, Petty Mason, for helping do this uh, research and debris, as always. And Jess, I haven't seen Not the Mama for a while, but she brought this case to my attention. So thank you, Jess. For children, a simple background check would have shown you. Abusive boyfriend syndrome is a thing. Scholars note there is a statistically greater potential for instability in homes where adults and children who have no biological connection reside. Their primary interest is really the adult partner, and they may find themselves more irritated when there's a problem with the children. In an article, Child Abuse and Other Risks of Not Living with Both Parents, published in Ethology and Sociobiology, Martin Daly and Marga Wilson note, if their parents find new partners, children are 40 times more likely than those who live with biological parents to be essayed or physically abused. According to a Missouri-based study of children living in homes with unrelated adults, children are nearly 50 times as likely to die of inflicted injuries as children living with two biological parents. These are worrying statistics, both disturbing and scary. Parents have got to be more cognizant of the dangers of bringing someone you are dating around your children, men and women alike. As we found in one of my previous videos about Iris, the girlfriend of Iris's father plotted her death for months. Now, remember, everybody, we want to get this case out there. So if you interact and you're on the channel watching, all you got to do is hit the like button so more people can hear about this and then comment. If you comment and hit the like and then you, if you want to share, share it. It gets in the algorithm so more people can hear about this case and we can know about it before trial starts on November 21st. Lou became a YouTube member. Thank you so much. She did not get essay. We were talking about statistics here. So no, that should, they were talking about statistics. No, so she didn't say where they came from, but it's probably a national statistic that she was going through. All right. And the, I will tell you about the lady speaking in a minute. Before she succeeded, if you haven't already, go watch Iris's video. I'll link it in the description. So it's not just bringing unrelated men around children. It's unrelated women just the same. As parents, our babies have to come first, not who we might be dating at the time. This next comment, if true, is absolutely disgusting. This comment is stating that Rachel was telling people that Aubrey collapsed and no one knows why. It's still under investigation. And right below it, the same commenter states that Rachel was heavily hinting, but didn't outright say her son had something to do with it. I'm wondering, is that going wow. to be Rachel's defense in this case? Would she really stoop so low as to blame her own son? That would be about as low as you can go as a mother. Now, somebody said earlier, many times the children end up being abusers to the siblings. So think about that. And now she's trying to, uh, she's trying to blame her son for that. Trying to put it off. She looks way different in this jail picture, right? I'm glad you're covering this. I'll let my friends know. I live in VWA and was covered uh, WSA three local. Well, thank you, Jamie Dial. I appreciate that. I'm. Yeah, please do let people know about this. Karen, good to see you. Thank you so much for the $4.99 super sticker. And Roxanne, glad you're here to bring this out, Jay. You're welcome. Thank you guys for being here. All right, let's keep going. I really hope she doesn't go there. If she doesn't blame her son, I could see her blaming it all on Clay and use yep. some sort of battered women's defense. But there is zero defense for what happened to Aubrey. Rachel, being a nurse, knows there is help out there for women and children to get out of an abusive situation. I'm sure she was trained on recognizing signs of abuse and has probably handed many women pamphlets full of information on how to seek help. Regardless of what she may or may not use as her defense. She this is the best look on her is the one with handcuffs. You also remember this one, Jessica Rolera. I'm so glad you caught alive too. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can catch more lives and then hit the like button. Yeah, children, most likely children don't lie about that. All right, so <clears throat> listen to the child if they tell you that. She is charged be equally confused. as Clay, so law enforcement must have found evidence that she participated in Aubrey's demise. Here are two posts from Rachel I also found interesting. This one says, one of the most underrated ingredients for having a good life is a clear conscience. 
to know you're not out here doing people dirty, hiding who you are or screwing people over, lets you sleep peaceful at night. Well, well, well. If we put this post in context with this case, it seems to me a guilty conscience is indeed what she may have had and is posting this to make herself look and feel better. Just my opinion. And Lots of people actually do that, folks. Lots of times when someone comes on here or anywhere and says, you know, I'm the greatest thing since whatever, and I'm so honest and I'm so good and I'm this. When they're telling you, when they have to tell you that they're that, instead of showing you that they're that kind of person, it's a big red flag, y'all. So don't listen when someone says, I don't do this because I'm so great and I'm the best and I'm trustworthy. You can trust me. No, just trust them because they've shown you that. Yeah, these I these memes are the worst thing that's happened to our lives. Look at this meme. A nur- As a nurse, we have the opportunity to heal the mind, soul, heart, and body of our patients. They may forget to name, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Maya Angelou. Well, lady, you didn't do that for your daughter. Rest in peace, Aubrey. And then there's this post. As a nurse, we have the opportunity to heal the mind, soul, heart, and body of our patients. They may forget your name, but they will never forget how you made them feel. That is so twisted to me, knowing what was going on in her home with Aubrey. This was definitely not a match made in heaven, more like one made in hell. And because of this, Aubrey is gone and her siblings will carry the weight of all of this for the rest of their lives. I want to talk about the home they were living in. I went on Zillow and found that it is now up for auction. I tried to find deed information on the home. Yeah, this is a good uh, little first episode for you all. We're kind of digging into a little bit of everything. They didn't actually say if she was singled out, but I'm pretty sure she was singled out. I'm pretty sure that she was the one taking the abuse because she was the younger one. Maybe Clay didn't like her, didn't like having a younger child and having to deal with things that that come with a younger child. We don't quite know. We'll know more as the trial comes out, the pre-trial hearing come out comes out, then we'll figure that out. Siblings are all taken away from her and are with the family. Now, of course, we're not going to know exactly which family, but I know there's biological dads that are more than happy to take them. She she had some kind of deal with the bio dad. So um, we haven't dug into them. I only know of Aubrey's bio dad, and uh, I don't know about the other ones. And did find it showed the last owner was Rachel Waddell. It's unclear if Clay was living there with them or not. If he wasn't living there full time, I'm assuming he was there often. But what struck me was how small the home is. According to Zillow, it's a three bedroom, one bathroom home, just under 1200 square feet. They only have a photo of the front of the home posted. I was hoping to find photos of the inside to get more perspective on their living situation. But all I could find was the front of the home. In this size of a home, there is no way the other children did not at least hear what was happening to Aubrey. I imagine Aubrey and all of the children feeling trapped and terrified in such a small space with such rage and anger. So to recap what Clay and Rachel are facing, let's read through this article real quick. The Greenup County couple implicated. All right. And if you all came in here late, this is going to give you a good recap of what I talked about in the beginning. Hit the like button after we're done here. I'm out of here. I'm going to get Reese and go hang out with her. I actually didn't pick her up today. My friend had a birthday party in the middle of the day and had a bunch of food and stuff. And now I'm sleepy. But I'm going to go get Reese after this. So do hit the like and subscribe if you haven't. And I appreciate every single one of you for looking into other cases with me and not focusing on one child. ...in the murder of a five-year-old was granted bond on Thursday morning. Rachel Waddell, 36, and live-in partner Christopher Clay Stiltner, 38, were booked into Greenup County Detention Center last week, each charged with the sole count of murder. Their murder charges stem from a lengthy investigation into the suspicious death of Waddell's daughter, Aubrey Stowers, who died June 17, 2023, at the couple's Wortland home. According to Kentucky State Police, Stiltner and Waddell were arrested without incident after a Greenup County grand jury found a probable cause to charge both parties separately with Aubrey's murder. Authorities have not released details about the pair's specific alleged actions to protect the integrity of the legal process. 
but the couple's separate indictment suggests the two equally wantonly engaged in conduct, which creates a grave risk of death to another person and thereby causes the death of another person. On Thursday, Stiltner and Waddell made their first circuit court appearance for arraignment before Greenup Circuit Judge Brian McLeod. Prior to the court's commencement, the couple fell into line with other inmates, transported from the jail, and filed into the jury box, with Waddell seated in the far left of the front row and Stiltner blending into the top right. In addition to their separated seating arrangement, Waddell and Stiltner's emotions also appeared to be divided. Stiltner, dressed in a blazing orange jumpsuit, sat idle and aloof and stared straight ahead throughout the proceedings before his case was called. Waddell, however, appeared anxious and emotional before the hearing, as she mostly gazed at her shackled feet, fidgeted with her hands, and sniffled, mimicking a quiet sob. Just after 10.40 a.m., the two were called before Judge McLeod as defense. Yeah, this is really good uh, way to wrap this up because it's giving you a good idea of what happened in court when I don't know of any cameras that have this. So it gives you a good idea. And the boyfriend did absolutely live with them, MS, and uh, V12 The Corner. What's up? Good to see you. Love having new faces in here and ones that hopefully want to get justice with us for children and all people. But this five-year-old could not defend herself. So rest in peace, Aubrey Stowers, and do remember that name. Attorney Sebastian Joy officially stated he would be duly representing Stiltner and Waddell. Joy waived formal arraignment meaning Waddell and Stiltner's issued indictments were not read aloud to the near-capacity courtroom and not guilty plea was entered on the pair's behalf. Joy also requested McLeod to take up the issue of bond as both were originally booked into custody without. Based on Waddell's lack of criminal history and her previous punctuality in family court, Joy requested a $50,000 bond. As far as Stiltner, Joy pitched $100,000 as he said he was familiar with the case and believed the murder of Aubrey was not an intentional act after reviewing the medical examiner and coroner reports. Assistant Commonwealth's attorney Joe Merkel brought up Stiltner's previous conviction, which Merkel said involved the abuse of a minor victim. Joy clarified it was previously amended to a misdemeanor. Merkel said the bond should reflect the seriousness of the charge and requested $500,000 for each. Judge McLeod ruled a $200,000 cash or property for each Stiltner and Waddell. A pre-trial conference is scheduled for April 18, 2024. The two are also tentatively scheduled to stand trial in August of this year. If convicted by a jury, the couple faces life in prison. Let's hope. All right, let's hope that life in prison is what comes for those people, both of them. I don't want to play the music, but let me just put this on real quick. Crying out for justice as I say goodbye to everybody. Um, It was a definitely this hour and 20 minutes went really quickly. So as we're leaving, I'm just showing those pictures. This is the reminder that we want justice for Aubrey Stowers. And basically, it's a slideshow of what we pictures we showed but there's music and i don't want to play the music so holly s i feel bad for the siblings too yeah she really did blame her son she really did sweetie good to see you in green all of you to see you in green melbourne girl loves you and your channel thank you lola i appreciate that i appreciate you all for the love and support and just for being awesome people an awesome community thank you so much Good night, CC, and everybody else as we play this on our way out. Yeah, justice for all of these children. And just remember, we, we want to, you know, a night after night do the same uh, cases. But we got to open this up for all the children. Time does fly. I always spend time with guilty of crime. Good time. And I always go, it goes so quickly when I spend it with you all. So I love you all as we see this. Look at this angel. Ah! It drives me nuts. She's so cute. I literally have baby fever now that Reese is going to be 10 in the next week or the week and a half. Look at how cute the baby is. Yes, be safe and have a good night. I can't even, y'all. Take care. Take care. Yeah, man. Reese, I can't believe Reese is going to be 10. Less than two weeks, my baby will be 10. And my baby looked like that, like a cute little thing. And now she's a big giant 
giant mini me. Thank you. Thank you. Haha, <laughs> six year time. Yeah, you're on Central. I'm on Pacific. A lot of people are on Eastern Standard Time. PST, we got Central. Hello, Marin Fox. How you doing? Thank you all for everything that you did tonight with the show and being such sweethearts. And even if you're a man in here, you're still a sweetheart. Yeah, justice for this preci precious angel, Aubrey Stowers. Now, if you haven't seen this, you know her name. Bree, my daughter, will be 15 in three days. It flies. It flies. Yeah, 20K soon. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Oakland, California. You know I'm in San Jose, my man. Oakland, California. San Jose, you're in the East Bay. I'm in the South Bay. Bay Area. California love. That's all I got to say. I do love California. All right. That's Aubrey Stowers. All right, everybody. I love you, each and every one of you. I'm going to pull this down. Thanks to Inspector Gen Xer for the video. You can see it right there. Go give her a follow, Inspector Gen Xer. And uh, on that note, I love you all. I will see you tomorrow night with who knows what. I don't know. But love you all. Guilty of crime. I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed my content, please share this video, like, and subscribe. You can also follow me over at Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, X, or Gmail. If you'd like to donate to my channel, you can use Cash App or Venmo or PayPal. Thank you very much in advance. Guilty of crime. Are you guilty of crime?